Hello there, here's a video on the new scripted block text planes and here I have text planes this block um, as you can see it has a quartz block as its model and then I've got four different text planes there's availability of six on it and um, right now if you click on it it will appear as if the text is rotating kind of around here one is going one way the other one's going the numbers are going opposite so that's just to demonstrate something you can do with it um, over here I did a similar one and the reason I did it on top is because in here I've got a scripted block that is a little control panel and I noticed how different the coloring is on the top of the block. These, these are the exact same colors and you can see this is yellow. This bottom line right here is yellow. Okay, it's and it's just it should be yellow like that. And this is like a purple, that's a light green, and then that's the dark green. It's uh, just doesn't look good on the top so that's why I put, uh, I was using the side of the block in there. I flipped things around and I'll show you what that did. Um, But before we go in there, I just also, this was something else. This is my kind of test block here. And this um, just shows you, this is actually superimposing two uh, text planes on top of each other, just changing the colors. Um, you could just change the color of the one text plane. Um, it didn't really have the exact effect uh, that I had wanted. Um, So there's different things you could do with it. These are the special ASCII characters that you can uh, also use, the extended ASCII. Um, so in here I built a control panel and what it has here, it can uh, open and close the doors. I think I have to click on it at least once here. And close those doors close that door. I can open this door. So there's four doors. Open this door. You can also control lights in here. There we go. Uh, there's three lights, one at the end, one in the middle, one over here. Those turn on and off. We'll maybe leave that one on. And then it's got equipment. Okay, so how I made these menus is that uh, the top one is simple. I just uh, divide the box, uh, the block up into three parts. And since I'm facing north, uh, I just have to deal with the X position on top of the block. So when I select a, the top third, the middle third, or the bottom third, it will uh, change the text plane on the side of the block and that's how I uh, handled those menus uh, on the top but on the side what I did like with the on and off switches and what I'm going to show you here with the equipment is that I actually insert another program that will this right here that will determine two that will it will save two coordinates of a box uh, each time for each area instead of me having to write it down it will actually write part of the program for me and will store it in a file uh, so it uh, you can either have it right now I've got it set for the uh, the Y and the Z because I'm going to be taking uh, positions on the side of the block in the Y and the Z direction and not on the top which would be the X and the Z <laughs> so here we go. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take uh, the the, uh, the areas of those uh, blocks right there and then that's going to choose different swords and things like that and it will write it into a file into this directory right here. So uh, you could make it any directory but that's just a scripting directory. I just already had that path saved. So what you do uh, is you uh, click on it first with a blank with an empty hand and then you click on it second for the second point with a 
with the iron sword or the stone sword there. See, empty hand, stone sword, and then empty hand, and then stone sword. And what this does, it it saves those two coordinates in a an array. So I have those. Actually, it saves all four of those uh, coordinates in a, in a uh, points in an array. Uh, the well, it saves the x, y, and x, y of the other end. And then when I'm all done, it uh, I use the diamond sword, and that will close the file out. So uh, I'll show you here in a minute. It'll make more sense. But yes, it, it saves four numbers in in an array. And okay, I'm done. Uh, we'll just put this block back and here is the file written. You open that up and there's the points. So I've got six different groups of points and I'll go here. This is the actual program that I will put back in the block and here I have this empty space here for if I select equipment on the top and I can use the identical stuff from the lights that I used uh, for the lighting uh, area. I can use the identical um, format because all I'm changing is the coordinates of the uh, hitboxes, basically, if uh, you can understand that. So th that's the coordinates. That's the uh, upper corner and the lower corner of each one of those blocks. And then um, the rest of this stuff is just the logic behind it. It's just saying if it's less than this, uh, coordinate and more than that coordinate then uh, it must be this box so I'm just going to take this out of here uh, what I have to do is when you click on one of those areas it's going to give you it's going to set in your hand uh, that uh, tool or weapon so I those represent a diamond uh, iron sword and gold sword and diamond axe, gold axe, and uh, iron axe. So let me just uh, go through this real quick. I'll just speed this up and we'll see what happens. Alright, all I have to do here is just to edit each one of them to uh, create the proper item and then put it in main hand and then it'll be all done. I just have to copy it and put it in the scripted block and replace that uh, other program and see it's working now and we'll, we'll just test out this new procedure and there you go. An iron axe. I click on diamond sword. I have a diamond sword in my hand. So you could have it do just about anything, and uh, <laughs> any selection of the block. I was thinking of putting colors behind some of these here with maybe another text plane, but that's for another day, and thanks for watching.